The future of insurance is set by what takes place in its context. The future of car insurance, for instance, is set by the future of transportation and mobility. The future of home insurance is set by how people will live in the next decade. Smart cities will have an impact on both. Smart cities are about cities tailored to their citizens. Kinder cities that leverage connectivity to create a more human place to live based on efficiency and ecology. Smart cities gain more and more attention because urbanization is persisting. When cities are getting larger, so are the challenges regarding infrastructure, resources and living conditions. Intelligent use of connectivity, digital and data help to understand the rhythm of the city better and to improve the quality of life for its inhabitants. We didn't only come to Barcelona for the nice weather. In fact, Barcelona is recognized as one of the smartest cities in the world. And Michael Donser Carbon, the chief technology officer of the city of Barcelona, is the driving force behind this. We're therefore very honored to welcome Michael here on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Donaldson. Right, Roger, thanks a lot wherever you are. Uh, well, thanks, thanks especially to, to the organization, to IDC, uh, to choose Barcelona for this great event. And thanks a lot for, for inviting me. I'll be sharing for the next 20 minutes, no presentation, I hope it doesn't get too boring. I'll be, I'll be presenting our strategy on AI, the, the City Hall strategy on, on AI. As I said, it's a great honor to be here to share with you some of the key points we've been working for the last mandate, for the last four years, and especially talking about the, the next steps in the, in the future. And it's great, as I said, that you've chosen Barcelona uh, to, to have your, your Congress, your annual Congress here. I hope it's not too warm. Uh, it's even warm for us, but well, listen, we've got the beach there, so take a nice swim and everything will be, will be just, just fine. Listen, I feel a little bit, I don't know whether to say uncomfortable or not, because I have no idea about insurance. I do pay my home insurance, my car insurance. I'm not here to buy, so I feel comfortable in that, in that sense. So when I was talking to Roger about uh, me uh, introducing our strategy, uh, it didn't make much sense, but then he was telling me more or less what he's been saying in the, in the video, in the video we just, uh, we just saw, and things started to get a little bit more uh, in, in terms of, of me being, being here. Because basically, what we're looking, uh, what are the two goals we are searching, uh, deploying this strategy on AI, on, on combining AI, uh, big data, and algorithms. Basically, we're, we're chasing two goals. First of them, would be how to become uh, or how to pass from a reactive administration to a proactive administration. It means that we want to get closer. We want to get to know our citizens. We want to, to have kind of a profile uh, on, based on their data in order to deliver more proactive digital service. And the second of them all, uh, the, second, the second goal we are trying to achieve with this strategy is how to protect uh, the rights, the digital rights, how to, to fight against uh, discrimination when we deploy these public services, when we deploy these uh, public uh, policies. So I think, in kind of a sense, it's pretty much the same of what you're doing. You're trying to get to know much better your, your customer, so you can, you can give them uh, the, the products they need based on their profile, on their needs, and, and I suppose, and I, and, I, and, I, and I hope, and I'm sure that you do it protecting uh, their rights and, and the non and, and, and fighting against the discrimination because it's something uh, everything related to, to data to private data to, to digital rights it's something that the, the concern about this it's growing we see it in, in, in the concerns of our citizens and I'm sure that you're also um, getting this sense when when you work with your with your customers and with the rest of the of the companies so uh, let's get a little bit uh, in details, uh, but before that, let me let me let me talk about what was the, the 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 initial approach in terms of technology, in terms of using the the emergent or not such emergent technology. You know that AI has been going around. 
for like the last 50, 60 years, but it's true, at least regarding to the public sector, that it's a kind of an emerging technology. So our approach was uh, in the terms of, there's a lot of technology going on, uh, so much technology going on, in fact, that we hardly can understand what's going on. We know for a fact that only in the last 20 years, I mean, at the beginning of this 21st century, there've been as many as digital and technological disruptions as in all story of, of mankind. So it's impossible, and especially for us, public administrations, that we don't have the professionals, we don't have the professional profiles inside our organization. It's impossible to try to understand the, 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 this uh, technology that's in such diverse and so fast and so, so dynamic. You know, I mean, we, we still are on this conference on WebEx and Zooms and Teams telling our colleagues to unmute themselves, and we are now driving ourselves into, into metaverse. So, I mean, it's, it's really difficult to, to understand uh, what, uh, what we're trying to, to, to achieve uh, regarding, regarding technology. So, uh, as I said, uh, what we know for sure is that technology is a very important driver that we need to use uh, in order to, 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 to deliver much better public services. And it's something that is sure, uh, it's, it's kind of an, an obligation. But we need it to do in terms of what we call humanizing technology. Uh, that, means, that means that uh, we need to, to, to use the technology uh, as, 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 at the service of people's needs. It's not technology for technology. It's not technology for data. It's not technology for infrastructure. Of course, it's all about it. Of course, we are deploying 5G in our city. Of course, we are deploying the Internet of Things. In this same venue, we've got the Smart City Congress as one of the main important Congress in, in Barcelona. And it's all about that. But it's especially to put the technology at the service of, of people, at the, at, the, at the needs. We need to know the needs of the people, and then we need to use this driver, technology, AI, in order to deliver, in order to deploy better public services. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Basically, as I said before, it's going through, uh, or passing from the reactive administration to, to a proactive administration. We are kind of an administration. Uh, administration have been built for the last 150, 200 years, and basically we are working under the same the same idea. We deploy a lot of services, we do a lot of policies, but we are waiting for the citizens to come and ask for these so for these services. We believe that the combination between big data or good data, if you want to call it, and algorithms should put us in this dimension of going to our citizens based on what we know about them. We know for a fact that uh, at the European Union level, 30% of the subsides, 30% of the economy helps that are given from the public administrations to their citizens are lost because the citizens, they don't even know that these helps exist. So we are talking about a lot of inefficiency in, in terms of economy. We are, we are talking that 30% of that budget is wasted because it could be used in, in something else, and which is worse. We're talking about that all these helps that they, 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 they kind of uh, give the welfare uh, rights and the welfare states to the, our citizens, they are lost because they, didn't, they don't even know uh, that they should or that they could or they are potential gainers of those, of those helps. So basically, we want to, to be kind of a, a Netflix. I mean, it's very simple, but you know the way Netflix sends us the email on Friday night, according to what you've been watching, you might watch or you might want to see this, this film or this TV show, well, it should be the same with us. According to what we know with you, uh, you're living on your own, you're more than 65, uh, your income is like this. This is a kind of a help you, you, you have for electricity. This is another help you have for uh, the house repairing or, or, or wherever. And, and we should be doing the same with all the needs from our citizens. This also means uh, that we need to face different challenges, uh, digital challenges, transformation as well, and the way we collect data. Um, the way, at least uh, in Spain, at least in Barcelona, the way we, we, we have our, our, our procedures is based on the files. It's not based on data. What we collect is basically we, we open an, an a file and we put all the documents related to the situation of that citizen or that collective or, or that person. We need to change from, from PDFs, from words, from documents. We need to change from that idea to data. 
Uh, that means, as I said, a digital transformation, but also means a regula regulation transformation, and it means that we need to gain the data from our citizens. We need to gain the trust uh, from our citizens in order to collect, in order to achieve this, this data. Um, this is an issue. Uh, we've heard about uh, Cambridge Analytica, um, we've heard about some other scandals, and this is a great issue, uh, how to collect the data from a public administration uh, perspective. As I said, I don't know if it's a problem of trust, I don't know if it's a problem of uh, public administration representing Big Brother, but we know that it's, I don't know if it's because of the RGDP, which uh, it's, it's, it is very restrict, and it's good that it's restrict in terms of collecting data, but it's a problem. It's a problem that we need to, to face. I remember, like, three years ago, I think it was um, here in, in Spain, we've got the National Statistic Institute that was trying to, or was going to gather 10 million uh, movements uh, or 10 million uh, people's movement according to their to their phone, uh, their mobility basically, knowing where they were going, what times, uh, where they were going to and coming back from their homes to their workplaces or, or wherever, because what we want, what they wanted to do is collect all this data in order to have better mobility policies. To say, well, they, we need more trains here, we need better roads here, uh, we need more buses here or wherever. This uh, data was supposed to be collected through the phones, they had a, an, a, an agreement with the different mobile uh, corporate, with the different mobile um, companies, uh, and they had to push back because uh, it was uh, like the people, oh no, I don't want uh, the government to know where I'm going to, at what time I'm going to. It was supposed to be collected uh, on an anonymous dimension. I mean, the government only wanted that data in order to deliver better um, mobility policies but they had to push it back because of the reluctance of the people. It was very, very funny in the sense of uh, it was on the cover of the newspaper, on the digital newspaper for some days, and it was funny because the newspaper were giving advices to citizens on how to download different applications, different apps in the mobile in order to block the, the, the gathering of that data, but uh, without switching the, the phone. And it was very funny because all those applications meant that if you accept the terms and conditions, you should give all the data to those companies. The way we give it to Google, to Amazon, and to the rest of the big companies. So it's funny the way uh, we give it away without even thinking to the big private companies, but it, when it comes in terms of government, uh, we are pretty reluctant on, on that sense. Uh, this is a fact, and this is something that we have to, to, to work on. So this would be, this would, all these things I was telling about would be more related to, to the challenges we have, um, we have related to, to, sorry, we have related to how to gather data. The other issue that worries us, and it's the, the issue that we're trying to, to cover with this goal I was telling you about, is how to protect uh, the, the digital rights and how to fight against the non how to fight against discrimination the discrimination that sometimes uh, using this kind of technology especially biased data combining with algorithms can create in in our citizens um, the things have changed a lot I mean uh, we started this strategy like three two years ago and uh, when I was talking to my colleagues in the in the city hall uh, people didn't even think about uh, using AI in terms of public services. But now, after the chat GTP and, and the new AI, generative AI, everybody's worried and everybody's concerned about how we're going to use the AI. Um, we've got uh, a protocol. Uh, protocol, uh, it's, uh, we, it comes in force every time we, as a city hall, provide ourselves with a technology, with an algorithm technology. As I said before, we don't have, uh, we don't have the, 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 the potential, we don't have the knowledge inside uh, in our IT departments in order to deploy algorithms, so we need to buy them outside. But once we buy them to the software companies or to the tech companies, we need to know, we need to be sure, we need to be sure uh, that we can guarantee these uh, digital rights are the non-discrimination. We're going to do that with uh, basically two ideas, an ex-ante and ex-post uh, 
audit. audit uh, we're going to audit the use, the impact of the use of, of these algorithms. So when we know uh, or when we think that we're going to use uh, an AI uh, system, an AI algorithm system to deploy a public services, we're going to ask an external advisory council, we're going to ask them for a, for a rapport in order to detect if there's going to be any problem in terms of discrimination when we use this, this data. This is going to be pretty easy because it's just a, an independent rapport. It's going to be made by different university, both from technology scientists, uh, degrees, careers, and from their rights and, science, and, and social science perspective. Uh, it's going to be more difficult, the, the ex post uh, audit. Uh, we are working currently on a tender uh, in order to, to get, in order to, to buy this technology. So we're working along with the digital, with the technological sector in Barcelona in order to know uh, how much uh, they are able to compromise uh, in order of uh, trans transparency, accountability, get to know the code. Uh, of course, we need to balance that with the intellectual property, uh, which is very important as well. But at the same time, we need to, to, to understand, or everybody needs to understand, that we are delivering public services, that we are working for the general interest. So there are some red lines like rights and no discrimination that they need to, t to be on account. Well, this is what we've been working for the last uh, two years. As I said before, challenges are big. It implies digital intern uh, regulation transformation. It means gaining trust from, from our citizens, and it means to work hand by hand with the uh, private sector in order to deliver better public services. I hope it didn't take me that long. Time says here 30 seconds. I hope it was a little bit interesting, and especially I hope that you enjoy the rest of the Congress. Thanks a lot.